Welcome, everyone, to our online devotional time. Uh, so good to have you join us today. Uh, if you're new to these daily devotionals, welcome. And I hope that our time together will serve as a kind of catalyst to help you in your walk with God. Now, each week we try to have a, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, a focus that we do. And this week, um, the focus of the daily devotionals is on the subject of how to read the Bible and actually enjoy it. And so each of the ministers will be spending time exploring ways uh, that we can make the experience of reading Scripture um, and not just as an item to check off our to-do list, but to make it a rich and engaging experience with God. And so I, I, I want to remind you that we have devotionals on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday each week. Now my focus today, as we begin, is to talk about some of the simple ways that we can make Bible reading more meaningful and enjoyable. I love what Paul wrote in Timothy to Timothy, his understudy minister, about the value of the Bible. In fact, this scripture was one of the first scriptures I memorized as a child. All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. And I think that all of us agree that Scripture is good for us. Useful. That's the word that Paul uses here. I like that word. I like things that are useful. You probably do too. Over time, I've discovered some fairly simple ways to enhance the usefulness of the Bible in our reading time. In many ways, it's like learning any useful skill, Bible reading. When we learn to use some helpful tools, it turns a, a simple task into a joyful adventure. I know many of you have, are familiar with Jen Wilkin. She's a well-known Bible teacher. And she has a great way of illustrating this point. She said that when she was a young girl, her stepmother taught her how to cook. And it turned out for her to be just a wonderful experience. And she learned uh, things that were passed on from generation to generation from the previous cooks. Uh, down to her stepmother, and then on to her. And she said what helped so much is that her stepmom taught her to use some simple tools when you're cooking. For example, she said when you cook bacon, use an old cast iron skillet, one that's broken and, you know, really has a good track record of cooking things and making them very delicious. And when you cook that bacon, always turn it with a fork. She also uh, taught her that when you make a pie crust, you use a simple wire pastry cutter in a mixing bowl. And then she said, I remember she taught me about how to cut a biscuit by using just a simple can. And you just put the can over <laughs> the biscuit dough 
and it makes a great biscuit cutter. They're just simple tools, not anything expensive, not anything elaborate, but the results, she said, were delicious. And I think Wilkin is right when she says that the same is true for Bible reading and Bible study. If we learn how to use some simple tools, it makes all the difference in the world. So I just thought I would mention three that I have bumped into over the years that have been helpful to me. One is read again and again. Uh, One of the most challenging summers of my life was when Linda and I were in college together and we had started dating And uh, it had gotten pretty serious, and then summer came along, and she went to Michigan to work and to be with her family, and I stayed in Texas. We both got various glamorous jobs, you know, those summer jobs where you work 12, 14 hours a day. My job was uh, working on a construction crew out in the 100-plus degree weather And so that summer was pretty lonely and hot and sweaty. But Linda was such a great letter writer. And she would write these wonderful letters. And when I would receive those letters, I wouldn't just skim over them very quickly and then toss the letter in the trash can. I mean, that didn't happen. I would go off to my bedroom and shut the door and read the letter carefully, and I'd read it again, I'd read it again especially the parts where she mentioned what a wonderful guy I was. And I would soak it up and soak it up and and sometimes go back to that letter and read it again and again. And those three months that we were separated, those letters, and particularly the way I read the letters, really made a difference. They were like oxygen for my lonely heart. And I think that sometimes that's the way we need to approach and think about our reading of Scripture. Read a section of Scripture again and again. It's, and I've said this before and I'll say it again. It's not about getting through the Bible. That's not the goal. The point is to let the Bible get through to us. And so the, one of the ways we do that is by reading again and again. And, and one of the tricks that I've done is to print it out, uh, you know, print it out on a piece of paper, the section of Scripture that you're reading. And then that way you can circle as you're reading through slowly again and again. You can circle key words and phrases and go back and look and really, really spend some time with the Scripture. Don't hurry. Slow down. Soak it in. Read it like it's from someone who dearly cares for you. Because it's true. The Bible is really a love letter from your gracious God. A second tip I would give you is use a dictionary to clarify the meaning of words. Because words are tricky. They they mean different things at different times and different places. And I know if if you can handle the Greek language or the Hebrew language, I was forced to take Greek and Hebrew, and um, it was helpful. And maybe I can use a, a lexicon, and it's helpful to me. But I'm not really talking about that, not a Greek or Hebrew lexicon. What I'm talking about is just an English dictionary. And there are plenty of them. You can take your iPhone and find them very quickly. And when you come to words or phrases that are not clear to you, just look them up on an English dictionary. And reading the meanings of those words and how they're used can be really helpful. It's like having a good screwdriver in your toolbox. You find that you use it really often. 
and it's really helpful. And then the third thing is I recommend that you read multiple translations to really enrich the fullness of the reading. Uh, there are many good English translations of Scripture, and reading the Bible in several of them just adds color and texture. And what I've found is that often when I'm reading in a different translation that I, than I normally use, I have a kind of aha moment where I see something and I understand something that I hadn't before. So it's helpful. When I was a kid, my dad loved to have a big garden. And most of his tools were old. They were simple. They were well-worn. A good hoe, a sharp shovel, a sturdy rake, and some old leather gloves. And he used these simple tools and he produced a beautiful and fruitful garden. It was really wonderful to watch. And not only watch, participate in. Early in my career as a minister, there was a retired teacher who was a member of the church that I served. She was a delightful lady. One of the things that made her unique was that she was blind. She lost her sight completely when she was very young. And she was one of the most incredible people. She, she was so bright. She had gone to college, finished, finished high school, gone to college, and even uh, studied uh, graduate studies and got a master's degree. She became a gifted teacher helping uh, blind students to excel. And she was a great advocate for blind students. By the time I met her, she was almost 80 years old, and she was retired after a long career, and she was a member of this little church that I worked with. Uh, when I moved there, she called me on the phone, and she informed me that one of my jobs as the minister of this church was to come to her front porch and read the Bible with her. And I said, oh, that would be great. And so I started uh, a wonderful experience with her. I would go and to her front porch, and we would sit on that front porch, both of us in a rocking chair, and we would read the Bible out loud. There were times when we were reading the Bible, I would look over, and tears would be running down her face. We read very familiar passages again and again. We would read Psalm 23, the shepherd's psalm. We would read Romans chapter 8. She loved Romans chapter 8. And we would uh, read the Sermon on the Mount, sections out of the Sermon on the Mount, especially the Beatitudes. She knew all the words. Often when I was reading out loud, she was mouthing the words. And she'd have a big smile on her face. It was a delightful experience as we read the Word together. And in many ways, the Scripture came alive for me in a brand new way. She would say, thank you, again and again, and then she would feed me Sarah Lee pound cake and a Diet Coke. And I would say, see you next week. Sometimes I think we've made reading the Bible too complicated. Just some simple tools can help us bring the Word to life. And it really makes it an enjoyable experience. Let's pray together. Lord, Your Word is so useful. It helps us in so many ways. May Your Word come to life and be hidden in our heart. Teach us simple ways to make our time of Bible reading and study rich, meaningful, and enjoyable. In Jesus we pray. Amen.